Okay, everyone, so that was season three, episode 17 of Lucifer. And I really like that episode considering it ended on a very sad note because Lucifer, as much as he's a smart person, he's an idiot sometimes. But anyway, first off, I do have to say that I guessed the killer within the first 10 minutes of the show, so go me. <laughs> but um, to recap, um, there was a dance show and this girl was about to go on perform. Her name was Azara. Oh, I really hope that I didn't get, I, I just heard it like 40 times. I hope I didn't butcher that. Anyway, and as this woman was coming out with a mask, a firecracker bomb gun thing went after the performer and shot a hole in her stomach. But all of a sudden the real performer came out and was like, what the hell is happening? And thus leading us to our murder of the week. And then we had Lucifer going to Linda for some advice, basically, basically saying like, Oh, I decided to step away from the whole Marcus deal, and Linda's like, probably because Chloe almost died last week, and Lucifer's like, no, 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 oh, wait, I know what I can do. I can get Chloe out of the spotlight. Thus, this entire episode, Lucifer has been going around to other people besides Chloe and showing them the attention that he normally reserves for Chloe. Um, we also had a singing Marcus, which was honestly pretty terrible. Like, I... As he was like sitting there singing, I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> and Ella, being the sunshine that she is, tried to get Marcus to like lighten up. So she gave, so she went around the entire precinct and got compliments for her compliment box. And everyone just said he has really nice arms, which is true. Marcus does have very nice arms. And Ella asked Dan to try to cheer Marcus up, leading to a very awkward conversation in a bar that didn't really do anything at all, except for Dan introducing um, Marcus to Amenadil, even though they already met, and that whole situation. Um, plus, we had Linda and Maze kind of interact this episode. Linda came by Maze's apartment, or Chloe's house, whatever, and gave, or tried to give Maze an axe, a pretty awesome axe, and I love that that was a gift. Uh, but Mays never answered the door, so Linda left. And then we had further, or further on in the episode, Chloe told Lucifer that he, she knows what he's doing. She knows that the bomb scared him last week, that they could lose each other, so she's trying. He's trying to distance himself from Chloe. And I love how Chloe at this point is just so used to Lucifer's shenanigans that she's kind of like, you know what? Whatever you do, whatever you need to to get over this little hump, because usually by the end of the case, he's figured out. Oh wait, maybe that wasn't the best way to go about things let me retry that, let me apologize, or whatever he needs to do to fix whatever he's done that specific episode. Um, the case continues, and the big stalker fan that we thought actually killed Azara isn't really the killer. He ended up dying in his apartment because the CC assistant killed him because of that smoothie that they kept bringing up, and even whenever Lucifer brought all the ingredients up to the apartment, I'm like, it has to do something with that damn smoothie. Um... Then we had Charlotte going to Linda for their uh, weekly therapy session, and Linda was obviously very distracted. Charlotte's like, let me help you. So Charlotte uh, hosted a mediator session between Linda and Mays, and it started out not great, and it ended even worse. I'm wondering, because Mays just... I don't know if it's one of those things where it's the first time that she's had a friend and her friend betrayed her and she's never felt that before and that's why she's freaking out so badly or if it's something deeper because the way that she's acting I'm like why why is she so constantly pushing Linda away even though Linda has apologized and given up Amenadil the person that she loves because obviously she's in love with him I just don't see, there has to be a deeper message or a deeper reason to why Maze is p continuously pushing Linda away. Even at the final scene montage thing, she broke Linda's present of an axe. I'm just wondering why that is. Also further on into the case, we had Chloe almost getting shot and Lucifer freaking out for a second, but realizing, oh, wait, 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 I don't, she's, she's fine, it's just Chloe, like it's, it's just a regular person or whatever. So Lucifer humbly asked uh, the singer to accompany him to his penthouse because he's going to protect her, and that led to her wanting to have sex with Lucifer because 
duh. <laughs> but he's like, no, 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 I can't. Like, I don't. We haven't seen Lucifer um, go to, like, have sex with anybody recently. And I wonder if that's, be I mean, I wonder if we'll see that at all for the rest of the season, considering how this episode ended. But I wonder if he's slowly, I mean, I know he was um, dealing, and obviously we don't know what's going beyond behind the scenes, but he's dealing with that uh, deal with Marcus. So I'm, or if he's slowly coming to realization that he's in love with Chloe, I don't know. I think, I think he came to something, or some realization at the end of the episode, because the way that he saw Lucifer and Marcus go off, I was like, or Lucifer and Marcus, Chloe and Marcus go off, I was like, shit, boy. Um... But it led to an awesome, a really awesome conversation between Lucifer and Azara. I really hope I'm not butchering that name. I'm going to be very disappointed with myself if I am. To talk about, well, obviously Azara noticed the, like, way Lucifer looks at Chloe and all that. And they had a really nice conversation until she went away. She escaped and Lucifer was like, God damn it. And that led to going back to where Marcus was in the bar and that whole conversation with Amenadil and Amenadil was like, oh good, I fixed the problem, Marcus. You're no longer going after trying to die. It's fine. The deal. And Marcus was like, so why don't you have your wings back? And Amenadil was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh my god, my voice, did you hear that? It was horrible. It was like Marcus singing at the beginning of the episode. But then we had the singer do her thing, share her music out, and they had an awesome number between her and Lucifer, which I really liked, and that led to the killer being revealed because she held up a knife. It was Cece, and she was like, I love you. Like, I don't want you to go. I don't want to share you anymore. And that was basically the big thing. She she cared about her so much that she wanted her to keep her, like, you know, no one else could see her. And that's kind of what Lucifer was trying to do, but not obviously in that specter or that way. But still, Lucifer could relate. And as Cece was about to stab Chloe, Lucifer ran and tackled her to the ground and him getting stabbed in the chest, I think, right about here. And it was just such a sweet Decker star scene because just the way that, you know, she looked at him after Lucifer got stabbed and the way he held on to her hand was just awesome. But that led to probably my least favorite part of the episode, which I hate so much is that Marcus looked at that exchange and Amenadol was like, well, you know, if the devil can do that, then anything's possible. Marcus was like, oh, I know what to do now. Lucifer is vulnerable around Chloe because he's in love with her. So I just have to do the, th you know, I have to like date Chloe. I have to start the romance with Chloe. And maybe if I fall for her, then I will somehow become vulnerable. And the thing is, is that I don't, obviously, I don't think it's going to work out that way because Lucifer started getting vulnerable around Chloe, I think, pretty quickly around season one. And I don't think he, I mean, obviously he was infatuated with her, but I don't think it was something where it was full blown love at the moment. So I'm not sure... I don't, I don't know. I don't know because obviously the thing with Lucifer and Chloe is different and we don't know the full extent of their, like of why they make each other the way they make each other. So obviously it's not going to work out for Marcus and I'm just, I'm so upset at the fact that Marcus is using that excuse to play with Chloe's feelings because I, I mean he could have, I don't know, because if he doesn't end up re re legitimately falling for Chloe, he's messing with Chloe's feelings, which I hate. And I hated that scene whenever Chloe, whenever Lucifer came and was like, oh, so tickets, we're gonna go, right? And Chloe's like, I already went with Marcus. And I think at that moment, Lucifer kind of realized what he did and what was been slowly edging this entire season with Marcus and Chloe and the whole, I made a mistake. I think that's what he said to Linda in her office was heartbreaking and I'm so sad for him but I'm excited to see what's gonna happen because if Lucifer does want to get Chloe back or he does want to stop Marcus from you know doing like doing what he's wanting to do it might lead to some feelings coming out hopefully by the end of the season but I'm not sure 
There was a couple likes of the episode, which I kind of already explained throughout my recap. The axe present was just right on brand. The sacrificing, Lucifer sacrificing or almost sacrificing himself for Chloe or jumping in front of that axe and tackling to the girl's gal was awesome. And my only dislike of the episode, I think if we don't get a satisfying conclusion on why Maze is so upset with Linda, I will be a little upset because I feel like this is a lot of overreaction. But at the same time, I don't know what's going through Maze's head, so I could just be reading into things a little too much. I don't know. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching. And if you want to see my previous reaction slash review, all you have to do is click the link in the description. And as always, I will see you next time.